the first five here in Raleigh to Georgetown. Here's a three-point shot. Follow up Freeman rattles out. Hibbert blocked by Fry. They call a foul. Georgetown scored the first five on a Hibbert basket. Actually, they're going to call it a tie-up, and the arrow goes to UMBC as the Retrievers bounce back with a couple baskets by Daryl Proctor. Pretty good job by Fry right on top of that ball. UMBC, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. They far prefer to go by UMBC. The Retrievers debuting in the NCAA tournament. Going against the final four team of the year ago, the regular season champs out of the Big East. The Retrievers, 24 and eight on the season. Five of their eight losses by four points or less. Barbosa gives it up last second. Spatacora for the lead. Good decision by Barbosa. The hook shot, right hand. He tried it left handed this time, the right he goes. And they have to double down when he comes across that lane. I realize in this matchup, they're going to have to get some help. So we have our first break in the action. The 15 seed and the 2 seed tied early. Stolen away by Wallace. Good hustle by Ewing coming down. Yep. And it's Wallace converting. Jim, surprisingly, his father is here at the radio broadcast. <laughs> this pitch just worked out well, didn't it? What John, what John does is he probably calls it, look, no, I will be assigned to the Georgetown <laughs> site. Can you blame him? Uh, no, I don't blame him at all. One of the great guys I've ever had an opportunity to meet. And Proctor at the line hits the two. Johnson on the floor for UMBC, number 22. A three, and UMBC has a lead at 12-9. I think there might be something about these court, this court, Jim. The three-point yeah. shot today seems to be uh, automatic. We had eight made in the first game on this floor by Stephen Curry of Davidson. Six by Gray of Gonzaga on the drive. Oh, he hurt his hand. That's Wallace. Calls against the Retrievers. Yeah, and Wallace was going to Princeton. Instead, followed Coach Thompson to take advantage of the size differential. Vernon Macklin on the floor for the Hoyas. And from the outside, no Macklin with the follow. And there's an example. Just so much size on the floor right now for Georgetown. Here's a steal by Hodges. Sap defending. He's taking it to the hole. And gets the shot to drop the tie at 14. Pretty clever layup there, Jim. Parker listed at 6-4. Might not be quite back. They're feeding it to Hibbert, who draws the foul and one. That's the play right there. Go right over the top of the matchup. Six points per game. Good steal by Ewing. Ewing. Dumps it down. Blocked him once, too. Outside, it's Hodges with the three. A three-year graduate with a degree in economics, pursuing his master's now in economic policy analysis. Second team all-conference this year. Didn't have a first-team all-conference player on this club. Three second-teamers. Outside matching with the three-pointer of his own is Jesse Sapp. All right, Greg Austin Freeman goes to the bench for Georgetown, but he hit a jumper a moment ago to give the Hoyas their largest lead of this game. It's a 14-5 stretch right now for the Big East regular season champs. We're 27-5 on the year. Lost to Pittsburgh in their conference tournament final last Saturday night in New York. There's kind of a good news there. It is over the top. That's Here. all they have to do is throw the ball right over the top. I think it's okay. Yeah. I Wallace with the three. So Timeout called by UNBC. When I say NC State to you of a Houston guy, all I have to do is bring up Arkansas for Kelly. Even he played in that Final Four and lost in that Final Four two games. And, no, and you know what's amazing shot. about that, too? He's noted a little pressure here now. So that's taking a big chance pressuring out because that's going to leave Hibbert wide open. It's right wide open, and he knocks down a three. They've been stuck at 17 for a while now. Well, it's been straight man-to-man -man by Georgetown this entire ball game. You just the size differential is really hurt. There's there the key. Barbosa's second made basket. Saying, hey, we were in real trouble with eight minutes to go. That's Johnson dunking it down with seven seconds. They got it under 10. Wallace. Excellent first half. Right with one second. Must launch. He does in time. Oh! He got it for the three. 
Tough shot. Chris Ryan was right on it. Well, just when it looked like the last five points of the half would go to UNBC, the Hoyas. Is it a big one right here? Tough break for UMBC, Jim, because they had played five defense. This is a tough, tough shot. Fade away, right in time. Boyas shoot 56% of the half to lead by 12. Let's go to New York to Greg Gumbel. In the air, the ball was loose. You do have the right to retrieve it. That's why that wasn't a, a travel on his part. Funny looking shot. Proctor, one of the transfers that. Randy Monroe kind of had, uh, you know, the unknown factor going into this season. He had to deal with three transfers and working them into the team chemistry. At Coppin State, he had a 31-point game against North Carolina a and was the NEAC Rookie of the Year. That seems like 100 years ago, I'm sure, to him. Turnovers in the last two possessions for a guy who does not turn the ball over often. Ewing quickly outside for the three. Yes. That is Stewan Summers. Hey, Ewing playing. We talked about UMBC going 22 years in Division I before they finally made an NCAA tournament. When you think about streaks, how about Georgetown? They were in a Final Four, had an opportunity to have great success in the Final Four in 1943. It wasn't until 1975 that they got in another NCAA tournament. They lost a championship game to Wyoming in 43 after beating DePaul, the great George Mikan team that was Ray Meyer coached. But they went uh, from 43 to 1975, and then John Thompson got him back in the NCAA tournament. Got knocked out in the first round. Now the bench was that NCAA tournament game in 75. Put back Proctor again. Proctor. Making his presence felt. Six foot four. Vertical leap of about, what would you say, eight inches maybe? Eight huh? feet. <laughs> You're being nice. Yeah. And, uh, and, but he knows how to play. Yes, he does. Savvy. Yep. Good basketball IQ. Ewing with the turnaround. Showing a jump shot. It's there all day. And the sap missing at the top of the key. On the wing, Freeman hits a three. And uh, Coach Morgan's going for a timeout. He can see the same thing that I did. Yep, getting at it. If Green penetrates, George Don can wait to the end. Beautiful pass. That's Green with the assist to Johnson. Cabell Johnson with the dunk. Coach Thompson's got to say to Summers, what were you thinking of? Why would you leave that man wide open inside? Where else to go? Cabell Johnson back in November of 2005 playing for James Madison went against Georgetown at 14 points and seven rebounds. There's Ewing. Big step to the hole. Tremendous playing by Stephon Curry. <coughs> First foul on Rivers. Rivers back out high with it. Hibbert. Wallace floater. Yes. Now a biggest lead of the game, 19. Georgetown now, the thing that's very important here is to get your team back to play in a set, some semblance of order as to how they want to play. As you've got another game coming up. Green got the three. They're just trading baskets, playing sloppy basketball, almost thrown away there. You have to remember, in one regard, you're playing a team that won a championship. They're not your equal, but at least they've got some pride, so you've got to play solid basketball. As Chris Wright could be the X factor for Georgetown in this NCAA tournament. Just really starting to get in rhythm after missing the 18 games with a foot injury. A freshman from Washington, D.C. Got eight points off the bench. For Austin Freeman, that really bodes well for Georgetown in the future to have two guards in that freshman class, both of which can really play. And that's Green hitting another three, so a couple in a row for him. Wright has it taken away. No, a foul. Young man averaging 15 a game. Well, you think it might be the last of, uh, of Hibbert, but the margin's 14. Well, you, you're saving some energy here, which, I, you know, I don't think that's the major thing. They, they went through a brutal game with Pitt uh, in the Big East Tournament final. Pitt, uh, obviously, 
In that in that game, they imagine this as as much as you can see Georgetown being a solid rebounding club. Pitt out rebounded them 41 to 29. A lot of size. There's Hibbert wide open. The ball not going inside by Summers. You got to get the big man the ball. There he is. Hibbert goes to the far side smartly and gets the basket. That's the best that he's moved all day to get himself open for the ball, and it took a while for Georgetown to see him. First points of the half for Hibbert. Proctor working down low. And that's going to be a goal 10 on Hibbert. And Proctor has a chance to get in the history books. That's him tipping it in. That's what the, the brilliant Red Auerbach used to say is the most important thing for, for a coach. UMBC, a, a school with a student body of 12,000. His uh, single game record still stands at 10. He had that against Winthrop. Jim, you remember then he went on to play a little bit for the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, absolutely. Hodges reaching in. Hibbert pass over to Freeman. And the foul's on Proctor. They could have made this game uh, much easier had they used that technique earlier. Three-point play by Freeman. Yep. Nice fade. Ewing, four for four now from the field in this one. Gives Georgetown its largest lead. Been a very solid performer in this game. It's Hodges. And he bangs it home. Hits the three. Eight threes up there. Eight for 14 threes. Had 32 points against Ohio State. A new record at the Value City Arena. But today he has not look for his shot that much and obviously doesn't have much production. That was a good looking shot by Summers. Well, Barbosa was six points Billy. Yep six points for a guy that leads him in scoring and had that many looks. Look at Hodges. Back to back threes. One and one. This game never in doubt in the second half. No. Nope. And really the kind of performance that you worry about Barbosa. Good pass, pass. Followed up Proctor. And a timeout immediately called by the, the Retrievers. Of course, the North Carolina win in the regional final last year was another one. Yeah, I thought he had almost forgotten about that one, Jim, when yeah. you were talking to him. And he had the Big East win over Pitt last year in the Big East tournament as Ewing dunks it down. Ewing had quite a game. Today's Chevrolet Players of the Game. Our Daryl Proctor from UMBC, 14 points, seven steals. And Jonathan Wallace from Georgetown, 13 points, five out of 10 shooting. Chevrolet, Chevy, an American revolution. There goes Proctor out with uh, some nice congratulations by Randy Monroe. Did a terrific job. And Jim, as you stated earlier, one steal away from uh, tying the all-time record in an NCAA tournament game. Yeah, he, he goes to the bench with the seven. Hoyas comfortably advanced to take on Davidson Sunday. It'll be a 66-47 final. Georgetown the victor. We'll see them Sunday. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York.